Okay, there's two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic. In both collisions, total momentum is always conserved, and total energy is also always conserved. Uh, in elastic collisions, total kinetic energy is conserved. However, in, in, in elastic collisions, total kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, if you remember, kinetic energy is half times the mass times velocity squared. It's the energy due to the motion of the object. Okay, we want to determine if this collision is elastic. We don't know what the V here is. But if we use the conservation of momentum, and just like, like in the last video, we can figure this out. So this is going to be, it turns out, it's 4 meters per second towards the right. Now to find if it's elastic, we need to figure out the kinetic energy of the individual particles. Okay, so for this one, 54 joules. Half times is mass times velocity squared. This one is 10 joules. It doesn't matter if it's negative, 2 meters per second because when you square something it becomes positive anyway. So the total is 64 joules. If I do the same on the other side and I add them together, I get 64 joules. So we know this collision is elastic because the kinetic energy has been conserved. Now if this number had been smaller, let's say 50 joules, it doesn't mean that the total energy hasn't been conserved, it's just the kinetic energy hasn't been conserved. That kinetic energy has been converted to some other form, for example thermal energy. And the total energy and the total momentum is still conserved. Okay, there's a shortcut for checking if a collision is elastic. This condition will be true if it's an elastic collision. The initial velocity of particle 1 plus the final velocity of particle 1 should equal the initial velocity of particle 2 plus the final velocity of particle 2. Let's check if this collision is elastic. So initial velocity of particle 1 is 6 plus the final velocity which is minus 4. That gives me a total of plus 2. Okay, let's check if, if, uh, if this is true for the particle 2. The initial velocity of particle 2 is minus 2 plus the final velocity of particle 2, which is plus 4. So that gives me again plus 2 as a total. So we know this collision is elastic. So we don't have to use half mv squared for each particle um, and then add them up to check if it's uh, conserved. Though it's good, but this is a quick shortcut you can use. Okay, the following collision is elastic. Determine V1 and V2. So we have two unknowns. That means we'll probably need two sets of equations to solve this problem. So we're going to start off with the conservation momentum, which must always be true. So I'm going to work out the total momentum on the first side and equal it to the total momentum on the other side. So I'm being careful to use minus 9 for the particle that's going towards the left. I'm going to simplify this and I get this. Uh, the equation 9 equals 10 V1 plus 10, 12 V2. Then I'm going to conserve kinetic energy using that shortcut. So initial velocity of particle 1 plus the final velocity of particle 1 equals the initial velocity of particle 2 plus the final velocity of particle 2. And if I simplify this, I get the following equation. Now I have two equations which I can solve like a simultaneous equation. So I'm going to write equation 1 out first. Okay. Then I'm going to, into equation 1, I'm going to get rid of V2 because I know V2 is equal to 25 over v, uh, 25 plus v1. So if I put that in instead of v2, then I'm going to expand that bracket. Okay, I'm going to rearrange to get all the numbers on one side and all the v1s on one side, and then solve. Now I have v1. v1 is equal to minus 13. So it's going towards the left at 13.3 meters per second. And if I put this v1 back into any of the equations, I'm going to put it back into equation 2 because that's easy. So I put that back in there, v1. I get v2 as well, which is moving towards the right at 11.8 meters per second.